Shares of Samsara hit an all-time high today after beating revenue estimates for its fourth quarter earnings. And it's not just today. The shares have had quite a run, up like 85% over the past 12 months. Joining us now is Samsara's co-founder and CEO, Sanjit Biswas. Sanjit, um, you know, quite a quarter once again. I I'm interested in your perspective further on something you mentioned on the call last night about how you're tapping into a different budget than a lot of software companies. You're selling into the operations budget, companies wanting to be more efficient, more safe. Why is that such a booming business right now? Hey, John, thanks for having me. Uh, it's absolutely a different budget than I think what most IT buyers are, or, are, are used to thinking about, which is the CIO's budget. We're selling to the world of operations. We work with companies like USIC, who locate all the utility services underground and uh, dispatch 12,000 technicians to go mark the streets. These are businesses that run uh, throughout all different kind of macroeconomic environments, across all geographies, and really the backbone of our physical economy. So what's interesting about that is is how much uh, emphasis they have on things like safety, on efficiency, things like asset utilization, fuel spend. Uh, these are all the sort of operational considerations they have, which are ongoing concerns. They always want to do a little bit better. So is there a disconnect here, I wonder, in even how some investors are thinking about software going forward? Because so many of the uh, use cases that we hear about AI are actually operations-based but most of these companies aren't actually selling into the, the operations budget. And maybe talk about that within the context of connected forms, where I think you plan to make some news in June as well. That's right. So we have multiple applications on our platform. So what we've built at Samsara is a data platform. There are about 9 trillion data points a year that come in in the form of GPS locations, um, uh, billions of minutes of video footage, all kinds of sensor data. But to your point around AI, it's a tr tremendous lever or tool for us to analyze all of that data find insights in it and help our customers take operational actions. In other words, change their behaviors to reduce their risk on the roads, which for many of our customers saves them millions of dollars in insurance payouts. Uh, they can change their routes, they can change how they drive to save millions of dollars on fuel. And so AI is a tremendous tool for that because there's so much data to analyze, there's no way people could look at it and find those insights, but computers can. And uh, this is, again, all about the application. So we use AI as a real bedrock technology on top of all these 9 trillion data points to go surface those insights. Sanjit, I'm curious, just a macro question for you, given, given what you just said right there. I mean, you're working with construction companies, governments, transportation firms, uh, infrastructure. In terms of these different end markets, what are you seeing right now in terms of the demand picture? And how much does the macroeconomic backdrop actually factor in? Well, as I mentioned, these companies, they're the backbone of the physical economy. Uh, they run our planet, and they make up about 40% of GDP. So they are very massive industries. But it's worth noting that most of these businesses have been around, uh, many of our customers have been around 50 to 100 years, or even longer in some cases. So they've been through these economic cycles. Uh, they tend to continue to focus on customer experience, operational efficiency, uh, managing spend. And so those are evergreen challenges for them. Um, they have ebbs and flows in terms of demand, and that varies by industry. We're diversified across over 10 different industry verticals. So it's hard to say there's a single picture or a single thread that we're seeing across customers, other than they all want to be safer, more efficient, more sustainable. So an investor new to Samsara might look at the chart and think, oh, well, am I too late? You say that you're planning to grow headcount 30% in fiscal 25, half of that going into sales and marketing. In this quarter, you, you sort of uh, had a record 185 customers in the 100,000 plus uh, annualized recurring revenue cohort. What is that sales and marketing spend going to be able to do for you in understanding customer need and continuing to accelerate your revenue growth? Well, John, the context here is that we're selling to a very large market. Um, we're talking about a $60 billion total addressable market. Uh, it's growing about 20% year over year. So there's a lot of activity around digitization. And to, to engage with these customers, we need to grow our sales and marketing team who are our, our go-to-market force. Um, that investment you mentioned in headcount, a lot of it's going towards sales and marketing. A lot of it's also going towards R&D. We're in continuing to double down on technologies like AI that I mentioned earlier. Um, so for us, it's, it's about being balanced. It's about being sustainable. We're going to maintain where we are in the rule of 40. And uh, we're just going to continue to sell into this very large market opportunity and serve our customers well.